let's go to the next clip here oh yes play this one let's do this one this is courtesy of eternal mystery of brendan Shaw. have you guys seen this actually let's see if my video if my thing can work with this actually let's see if i can do this um i've actually got it down to what uh let's do the video output output in general hmm. what happens if i do it let's see if that happens if that does anything bear me a second i see this gonna work let's see let's see what happens here bear me a second i'm actually gonna play this um radio eternal mystery of brendan Shaw, courtesy of what's his channel called again retroactive let's see if it happens here let's see if i if let's see if this kind of freezes if not i'll take off the camera because this might be good to see my reactions to this one this might be a decent one so this is courtesy of um What's his face? Um, Retroactive. You guys know the channel. I've spoken about him before. He's really fucking good. Um, Retroactive is available there. Make sure you check him out. Good, good, good fucking videos. He's got a video called here, The Eternal Mystery of Brendan Shaw. The Eternal Mystery of the one B. Shaw. Let's see what he's saying on here. This should be a fucking good one. And again, we already got a freezing and coding error. So let's take off the camera. Let's not even try and, let's not even try and fucking play with this shit. And let's just go straight away. Okay. Let's just go straight away, my friends. Let's go straight a fucking way. Boop, 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 boop. Let's do there and let's play. Of all the things Shorb has done, why would you care? It'd be the same uh -oh. as if a cat created a profile. That's a good example. Who cares? Even a homeless guy. If a homeless guy, they have, it doesn't matter. Get the straw. Get that straw. I don't think I've ever seen anybody <laughs> eat or drink like that, but it's all good as he now. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that white tongue. That tongue needs a good scraping. Oh my Get the straw. Get that straw. I don't think I've ever seen anybody eat or drink like that, but it's all. Oh, I can't, I can't stop it. I can't stop it in time. Hold on. One more time. Get the straw. Get that straw. I don't think I've ever seen anybody eat or drink like that, but it's. Oh, I can't stop it in time. It doesn't fucking matter, but do you see that tongue? One more time. Let me see it doesn't second. matter. Get the straw. Get that straw. I don't think I've ever seen anybody oh. eat or drink like that, but. Look at that tongue. Look at that tongue. Look at that tongue. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen somebody with a tongue that fucking white? That needs a good scraping. That needs a fucking good fucking scraping. God almighty. Look at that shit. Look at that. Can you imagine the gunk on there? I'm sorry if you're eating. I really apologize if you're eating something. I'm really sorry. I'm really fucking sorry. Should I take off the screen? Should I take it off? Is that too much? Look at that. Can you imagine how much stuff that will come off there if we scraped it? Okay, I'll take off the screen. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jared Mellorick, kiss me. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's get off. Let's get it's off, all good off. as he now thinks he's a draw for 10 million against his apparent best <laughs> friend, me. Jake Paul. Having to clickbait with Golden Hours Chris D'Elia. Yo, big up. Um, what's that? Really? Of all people, for a few extra thousand views is sad enough, but he only... Oh yeah, true. They did kind of clickbait that one, didn't it? He turns up at the very end, of course. Even though Brendan doesn't train and Jake... <laughs> big up Young God Vibes. <laughs> no, I would never do that Young God Vibes, man. I'm not... Again, I wish I could be unique. I really do wish like I could be unique. I wish I could get fucked up on stream and do a good job. Or like, not even do a good job, like just get fucked up on stream and just have a good time. I can't do it. ...is 14 years younger. If it's BJJ, sure, but the Pauls only take boxing matches they think they can win. Either way... Oh, really? Big up, um, Austin Casey, you can you can pause, then press the period button um, to advance one frame at a time. Okay, you're a fucking legend. Thank you for that, brother. Appreciate you. Speculation is pointless as the Paul brothers are after Tyson, Tate, people with bigger fan bases than Shorb, and his super fans are more concerned with deciphering why the man does anything he does. And you also get this narrative, he's the best, he's the greatest of all time. He's not. He never was. What? We were sold on that. Yeah. But when you go, it's very black and white. You go through his record, he's not. Even down. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Oh, it is, isn't it? Wow. Big up Austin Casey. What a legend. Yeah, it does look. It goes one frame at a time. Big up Austin Casey. What a fucking G. Big up Austin Casey. Big up, big up. That's fucking sick. I didn't know you could do that. That's absolutely awesome. You would call this behavior a mystery for the ages, though many would tune in to see Shaw blues. As hated as the poor brothers are, youth and KO ability, if it's boxing, is definitely in their favor. Imagine they have nothing to gain fighting Brendan Shaw. It's actually going to be a worse thing for Brendan. 
Is the volume too low? What's low? Is it me or the or the volume of the video? Because the video is quite high. Is the video low or is it me? You're okay. I don't think I don't think um I think Brendan would have a lot to lose if he did fight the Paul brothers. I swear to God. Because it doesn't he doesn't win, he doesn't gain anything from it. Because if he loses, it's going to be super embarrassing. If he wins, everybody expects it because he's a heavyweight. Tyson Paul-wise, the age difference is gross, but if it's not a soft exhibition match, a Tyson KO is arguably what most want to see. Either way, with how poorly Shaw was treated when on Impulsive, I doubt he'll have anything to do with the event. You do YouTube? As he's got business to attend to anyway. <laughs> Shaw's podcast employers, Cast Media, finally have officially filed for bankruptcy 13th of March 2024, owing millions to podcast creators. Hold on, is retroactive Sunny V2? Or am I just thinking because he's fucking, um... Um, <laughs> big up Asada sees. If you do press control on the delete, you can enter. You get YouTube Premium for free. You're a fucking prick. <laughs> big up Asada sees. You guys taking me for a fucking fool. You're treating me like a fucking boomer. Uh, you guys are. You guys are fucking awful. Um, is fucking retroactive Sunny V two, or is it just from the same place? Even 456,000 is owed to Theo Vaughn, but why is Brendan not on the list? Because as we've covered before, Brendan took a terrible payout deal of 1.6. I don't think it's a terrible deal though, to be fair. I think it's a good deal. I think Brendan was never going to get that money anywhere else. I think that's why they re-signed to Podcast One anyway, because they're not going to get good deals from ads anywhere because their podcast numbers are fugazi. I think Podcast One probably turn a blind eye or know about the game, about fudging numbers. Like I think Keith T mentioned before, right? The House of Cards of podcasting where you sort of fake the numbers. You get the advance money from the podcast company then use that advance money to fake the numbers and then get more money, blah, blah, blah. I think other ad companies would have been more stringent about, you know, due diligence and shit. I don't think Podcast One does it. So that's why they stayed with Podcast One. Obviously get the money. Big up Austin Casey, I appreciate you. In YouTube, you can pause, then press the period button to advance one frame at a time. Yes, yes. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. I got that. I got that little tip there. I really do appreciate that. I'm going to, I'm going to be using that to a lot now going forward. I'm going to be using that a lot going forward. 100% going to be using that a lot going forward. I appreciate you. Six million based in shares in their new company, Podcast One, opening at 4.39 USD and still... <laughs> NJ Ranger, is podcast, what, is, is podcast Cringe also Sunny V2? Yeah, true. They're all from the same place. Maybe they're not. Maybe Podcast Cringe is Kiwi. We don't know. Barely above $2. It fell the moment Theo Von publicly dragged the company and Colin Tom... Imagine getting scammed by somebody with, you know, that's dyed their receding hairline blonde. Who remembers Bapa saying, if you hear me talking about celebrity boxing, then it means things aren't going well. Oh, yeah. Keith T. Brilliant memory. Oh, my God. I actually might need to find that clip and make a clip of it. Do you guys remember that? That's true. He used to always, like, rag on celebrity boxing. He used to always mock it. Like, oh, I can't believe these guys are celebrity, but I, I'm not going to celebrity box. I've got too much money. I, I'm too busy. I've got all these podcast shows. I'm doing these live shows. I'm touring. Like, you know, fuck, that's so true, Keith T. Wow. Funny how times have changed, isn't it? Funny how times have fucking changed. Thompson for ripping him off and still hasn't recovered. It's no surprise though, as even as simple as something like straws, Shaw can't be honest about. There's something very feminine about using a straw. No, exactly. I don't use them, right? Because I'm no punk. So many pictures you of straws. You do. No, you would for, an eye for this. You would for this. Uh, you wouldn't take the top off. Uh, honestly, have you ever met somebody? Can you guys tell me in the stream chat? Have you ever met anybody in your life who's ever lied as much as brendan about everything the only person i can think of is i mentioned all the time my old school friend he used to always lie about the computer games he had he lied about having a girl in his bed and he was fingering a pillow but i don't but that was like when we were like i don't know we were probably like 10 or something i can't remember anybody else who did that you know i can't think of a single person who did that i can't think so an adult who would lie that much about and it's not even that's how you know he's a pathological liar because it's not like he lies about important things he lies about nonsense oh yeah don't drink from straws like excuse me there's a whole fucking youtube there's a whole google images library of people of pictures of you drinking from a straw and making it a part of your personality and your identity 
like drinking a cup with a like straw like he used some that, that's what he did look at the video here he made it part of his brand my response to dana white i'm bothered with these fucking prolapse anus lips around his big gulp what a bizarre person bro i don't i, don't, I can't think of somebody because again i know of liars in my life who lie about their career right maybe they say oh they're the manager of a certain place but they're not really the manager they're a the janitor or that they fuck some girl but they didn't fuck the girl. you know that kind of stuff Brendan just lies about anything pull-ups straws headlining selling out shows like he lies about anything the spectrum is wide you know <laughs> yeah uh, if i here i take the top off straws is yeah, space yeah, space yeah, I know punk bitch. so having the level-headedness to not rush into a new deal with a company that's screwing you over as theo did was a bridge too far and we find out that the sponsors in his new truck show, Toontown, aren't actually sponsors of the show. Well, it Yeah, I, I, I didn't like this, by the way. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like this. Kiwi Tech are lame for this. Kiwi Tech suck for doing this. If you're going to try and, like, clout chase Brendan's podcast fame and use his, you know, notoriety for lack they're better of, right, for better or worse, to kind of bolster yourself and give yourself more exposure. But then when your fans call you out, and basically mock you for doing so you didn't like no we don't sponsor anyone he, he has our parts on his truck i fucking hated that shit i'm not gonna lie again you know i'm not the biggest beppo fan but i think kibitech was super lame for doing this kibitech suck for doing this at least kibitech who replied to a fan saying they do not sponsor shorb show he just uses our parts on his trx fueling further speculation as to how his multiple podcasts employees <sighs> studios and other costs are you see that what was that was that a ferrari or was that a red porsche I don't remember that speculation as that? to how he's multiple pod. Is that a red Porsche? Fucking hell, Brendan Shaw, bro. He was making money in it. He had the red Porsche. When did he have that? Wow, my God. This guy was making money. He was absolutely cr like, or maybe it's the same car, but he got it. Maybe it's the same one. No, I don't it's just a different one, isn't it? It's a different, different one. It's a completely different one. He was making fucking peas. Look at that. Jesus Christ. He was making some good fucking money, wasn't he? Absolutely crazy, bro. Oh, look at the interior of that. That's fucking awful, isn't it? He's got that little and he's got the fucking plaid seating. Like, what the fuck is going on there? And yet, oh yeah, he had that red Ferrari too, didn't he? Do you remember that? Brendan had a red. Did is this is this his Ferrari? Holy shit! <laughs> Brendan had this red Ferrari. What is this? Is this like a? Is this a? I don't know. I don't. I'm not really familiar with my Ferraris. What 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 model of Ferrari is this, by the way, guys? Wasn't that long ago I posted this What's up? about my boy about your Bentley? then Porsche now this what will be next Bugatti well done Brendan Shaw killing it what is this what Ferrari is this fucking hell that is beautiful how the fuck was he affording this shit being a being a low level comedian how how <laughs> how did he do this <laughs> he scammed it. honestly he won podcasting Brendan fucking won Brendan really made the most out of his fucking day in the sun in it <laughs> he did fucking well <laughs> bro guys no wonder eric griffin used to hate brendan could you imagine being a stand-up comedian for like 10 years plus struggling doing the door like doing the fucking you know sometimes serving the drinks doing the tickets and shit right <laughs> trying to get a spot on the open mic thing and brendan pulls up to the comedy store in a red ferrari can you imagine how much that would have hurt you? Seeing Brendan pull up in a red Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Oh, Jesus. What, what do you guys say? It's a Ferrari 612. Let's see. Ferrari 612. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah, I think it is. I think that's the one. I think that might be the one. Is that the one? Is that a Ferrari 612? Maybe. I don't think. Is it, is it, is it 612? Looks a bit the, the the headlights look a bit different, don't they? Or am I or mistaken? The headlights look a little bit different on this. Headlights look a little bit different. Uh, is there such a thing as a what is that? Is it, is it GTO? Maybe. Oh, there we go. We found it. There we go. Six six one two GTO. Is that the one he had? 
Is that the one he had? No way. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that can't be it. <laughs> Which one was it? Oh, what is it? It's the F12. What? what is it? It's the F12. F12 Berlinita. Wow. How much does this go for? Price. What do you guys think about how much it goes for? Guess in the stream chat. If you, if, you haven't, if you haven't Googled it, what do you think it goes for? If you haven't Googled it, guess how much this car goes for. What do you think? 100,000? 200,000? I'm going to say 150. I think about 150. I don't know how much Ferraris go for. I, I'm going to say 150,000. How much do you think it goes for? Let's see here. How much does it go for? How much? Let's see. Uh, let's go to Auto Trader. Let's see how, how much can you buy an F12 Berlinita? Let's see how much they go for here. Wow, 150. Yeah, 150. Basically, 150 to 200. Jesus Christ. 200 grand. A 200 grand car. This car, again, oh, so someone said it's about leasing, isn't it? How much is the finance? Good question. Whoever said that, the finance question. Let's actually check that out. But they're around 200,000, right? There you see the cars. Oh, it comes in yellow. That yellow is super ugly, isn't it? I would never get that. That looks horrendous. That looks like a wannabe Dodge or something. If you're going to get a Ferrari, you'd probably get it in red or like a different color. But yeah, that yellow looks horrible. I don't like that Bumblebee one. Let's actually go. Let's see. Um, Let's do leasing. Um, Let's see how much car finance deals. Let's see what they're saying. Auto Trader. What are we looking at here? Any prices here? Uh, did last second hand what they don't actually show you any deals here what, how much they're going to be leased for show me man show me get a quote I don't want a quote just give me a rough price you piece of shit finance example F12 how much it's going for here cash deposit total amount credit month oh fucking hell that's a lot in it 1,000 333 that's a lot of money bro how much you have to put down 30 grand you got to put down 30 grand <laughs> and pay 1300 per month to run this thing i don't know how much petrol it takes if it's probably super unreliable it goes in the garage a lot that's a lot of fucking money brendan was doing this like with standard like oh joe oh sorry joel damn it's easy to become so white Wow, so it's 200 grand used. So what is it brand new then? What is it brand new? Okay, good point there. What is it brand new? I don't know, is it brand new? Brand new price. <gasps> oh my God. Okay, cool. 239. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit, Brendan was driving this, bro. Terrible stand-up comedian had this car driving it on a regular look at this what's up dog look at this the only fighter ever to come out of fighting and do something new and buy your fucking ferrari look at that b I mean, let's not, guys guys let's not lie oh he looks a bit oh jesus christ brendan brendan all the pies isn't it this is pre ozempic isn't it look at that that's pre ozempic bapper isn't it fucking hell what's going on there then brendan eh that's pre Ozempic Papa there. What the fuck is going on there? Jesus Christ. Fucking hell. That's a nice car though, man. That's a fucking nice car. Let's not lie, bro. That is a fucking nice car. Let's go around it again one more time. That's a fucking beautiful car. Look, he didn't have it long though. So he probably was leasing it. He didn't have it long. It went straight away. Look at this. What's up, dog? Look at this. The only fighter ever to come out of fighting. That car's fucking and do something new and buy your fucking Ferrari. Look at that, B. I mean, it's funny, though, isn't it? He has all these cars and he has, like, two kids. Or at the time, he had two kids. Maybe he had one kid. It's a bit strange. Like, I don't know, like, how do you get away with stuff like this? You have to marry, like, a a wife that probably just doesn't care or something. Like, I couldn't imagine, like, my wife or, like, a part. Like, I couldn't imagine ever being allowed to buy stuff like this, like, just be able to, like, you got kids in a family. Like, what? Why are you pulling up in a fucking two seater Ferrari? Like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean, your kids need school shoes and book bags and shit. You could take a kid to McDonald's and here you are buying yourself a Ferrari. Like, you know what I mean, it would just look super selfish. Like, you could never do. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, you know, 
nitpicking a bit, but it's an interesting thing to do, isn't it? When you're like a dad. I'm living out of it, but yeah. Like, especially a young dad as well. You think you're going to put all your money into your kids and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Brad, yeah. But yeah, okay. That's Brenda living life. Let's go back to the video. Podcasts, employees, studios, and other costs are working out as sponsor deal contracts would then be lower based on their 2023 stats. There oh, so everyone's saying in the stream chat, you think it's leased? You don't think you, put, you paid for it, right? right? Realistic close to 300 pound option, 300 grand option, starting at 239. Also in USD, it's 500 grand. <gasps> God almighty. Is that how much it would cost in the, US, in, the, in the United States? Okay, it's 319, it says here. Allegedly, 319,000. But yeah, guys. So everyone thinks it's leased, right? Probably he probably get he got at least no way he he bought that right out, right? Is it cool? Yeah, you see what I mean. You see the monthly earnings of T Fat K. Allegedly, when I checked last time, like you know what's it called outside of T Fat K, Gold Now is the most successful thing that he does, according to Social Blade. Brad Sandals and ticket sales, as we're seeing with their lowly attended live shows. Under 100 tickets last show. The next show was 10 days out at 30 tickets sold and Jesus is now cancelled entirely. So, uh, so we're going to reschedule Austin. Yeah, we're going to reschedule Austin. April, Austin. May, so May, June. We'll do yeah, May, sorry. June. April, May, June. That's three months. <laughs> April, May, June. Which month? April, May, June, never. I still can't believe that they barely sold 100 tickets for the first show, then tried to do a second show so soon after. Barely sold 30 tickets before the date. And then I'm assuming most venues, again, I don't know much about venue stuff, but I'd assume most venues don't let you do a show if you don't sell a certain amount of tickets. They just say, you know what, you can't do it. They just kind of, it's kind of like a, if you don't reach a certain threshold, you're done. You know what I mean? Maybe. Bad fake, guys. Bring your baby to the live show. I'll bring my baby to the live show. Like the day it's born. Let alone can. Koyla, excuse me? His wife is a dent. She made a poll about flavor water. <laughs> I don't like talking about the wife on here, but some of the stuff that I hear about this woman, a poll about flavor water. Yeah, because she's the one that says she doesn't like drinking water, isn't it? It's like, then you have difficulties with your pregnancy. I don't, I don't know. I don't even want to get started, man. It's just too much redactness. It's too, it's too sad. It's too sad. Canceling his entire comedy tour with no return in sight. It's a real mystery as to how it's all staying afloat, leading to baseless speculation like this to spread across the... I don't think I don't think it's a mystery that he's that he's staying afloat. I think people underestimate how much ads pay for pod, how much the amount of money that ads will pay for podcast placements. I mean, people underestimate how much money it is. It's really, really good money from what you can kind of piece together from the podcasters and what they speak about. I think it's like you know per month it's like easily anywhere between like ten to thirty k that you're easily getting from these people. And then again, this could be like per month. This could be like a six month contract. So if you're smart, you can divvy out that money or spread it across, you know, however much you're doing it and then kind of use that money as a key and other people mentioned, use that money to then inflate and buy fake views, buy fake listeners, then to increase your amount of money that you're going to get again. Do you know what I mean? I think that's what they do. So I think people underestimate just how much money they make just on the ads alone. I know the show's terrible, and all that malarkey, but they've got a built-in audience. Brendan's still associated with Rogan. So it's one of those things where unless he does something stupid, he's basically set for life, you know what I mean, in terms of that thing, because you kind of got like a, you know, people just kind of listen to you via by habit, really. It's not because they even like the show, just through habit. The internet. Though it wouldn't be a surprise considering Tom Segura, Chris D'Elia, Andrew Schultz, and many others that grew up rich. Considering Brian Callan takes home 30k a month, uh, according to Mark Harley, Brendan's ex-assistant, they've either taken- Jesus, I believe that by the way. 30k a month, I believe that. Major pay cuts, are staying afloat on savings, or someone is financing the endeavor, as there's no way they're making enough to cover every expense. Shorb's subreddit of 150,000 anti-fans that watch his every move for comedy reasons, just not reasons intended, they're now taking a lot more notice of his wife's Oh no, that was on the Daily Mail. Wow, tacky woman slammed, but upstaging her best friend's engagement news by showing off her larger ring. Tacky woman. <laughs> They didn't even call her by her name. Tacky woman, you know, that's fucking horrible. Public Instagram with her going viral on X this week and due to her selling designer bags and clothes. People are speculating. Oh, yeah, true. Speculating if allegedly they're fake designer items. I don't think they're fake. 
I just think they make, I, again, I just think people underestimate how much money these guys make. I know they're redax and we don't really rate their intellect and we think the show's shit, but unfortunately, you know, they do make a lot of money. Like, it's not based on their talent or what they do well. It's just based on the, they've been around for so long. Imagine they go into podcasting when it was still kind of new. They've got that kind of old, it's like, the, it's like, um, it's that like DSP who I talk about a lot on here in the pod, um, or on the stream, sorry, Dark Side Phil. He's a horrible streamer. He's a horrible content creator, but he's been around for so long. He's been able to kind of just coast with that same audience that he built up from like 16 years of streaming, like before streaming was even a thing, he was still doing it. So that type of like consistency, especially if you're still around, if you don't give up, it's nearly impossible for you to like not have a career still, especially if you like kind of evolve, kind of change the times. It's kind of easy just to coast by because people are so used to seeing you around. They can trust you. They know you're going to be around, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I think people underestimate how much money they make. They make a lot of money, w way more than they probably should do based on the quality of the shows. But I think the whole podcast marketing game thing is all a bit of a scam anyway. So it kind of helps each other, do you know what I mean? Even if they're real, she's charging $1,500 for a $700 bag. Ah, the typical LA influencer. <laughs> it's rough until you remember the funeral fit post from Shorb and... <laughs> funeral fit. My grandmother would have wanted me to flex on my family just a time. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I, I forgot he posted on his account. I thought his wife posted on her account. It's actually Brendan uploaded this on his fucking own story. Funeral fit, you know. <laughs> Why are you smiling so much? It's a funeral. Why are you smiling like this? And why are you, why are you even taking a selfie at a funeral, by the way? Who does that? Who takes a selfie at a funeral? Who takes a selfie at a funeral? Please. Who takes a selfie at a funeral? Who does that? <laughs> you realize this is normal for their social media output and fits the stereotype of LA like a glove. Even Schwab's fight prediction record, you think he'd be better than the average man at picking who will win, but he takes a commentary role recently, and of course, the Schwab effect continues on where almost every time he picks someone, they lose. Jesus but it's alright because, plot twist, someone in George Bush's circle is repping Thick Boy merch? How about what? Really? Where's that? Oh, wow. That's George Bush, and that's the guy. He probably got it on sale or some charity shop. Do you remember? This is, when's the last time you've seen Brendan post a picture of him on his bicycle, by the way? Do you remember there was a picture of Brendan on his e-bike with a gel pack? Do you remember that? Some, I think I saw it on the Friday Kids subreddit. Somebody posted an old picture of Brendan flexing, holding his bike in the air with a gel pack in his mouth. Like one of those sugar, you know, gel pack things that you're meant to have when you're like, you know, running or something in your low energy. Like, bro, you're riding an electric mountain bike, an electric MTB. Why do you need a gel pack for? <laughs> <laughs> you're barely pedaling you're basically on like a a bicycle version of a moped there's no reason why you need a fucking gel pack like fuck you know we, we rename the Vulcan the Fathership the Fathership is so genius dude that Brian Callan the ultimate cuck in it the ultimate fucking cuck He's, like he knows how to play his role really well no wonder his dad gives him so much money that's a great idea. Boom. The f well, these two events alone prove the marketing genius. <laughs> Stepmothership, fathership. Yeah, let's just Jack Rogan's club idea and rename. I wonder what the Vulcan actually think about that. I, I bet they're okay with it because I'd imagine all the comedy clubs in Austin are probably suffering because of Rogan's club. They probably took all the audience, right? Massive audience capture, completely gone. Or not audience capture, ma massive just like, you know, just t took the fucking audience, I'd imagine. So they're probably any association with a, with a mothership is probably a good thing because it helps them stay afloat. I'd imagine so. They kind of cannibalize. That's it. I think cannibalizes the audience. I'd imagine that's it. Name the Vulcan to something with ship in it too. I'm sure they appreciate that for helping their own brand recognition. Retired UFC fighter Sean McCorkle is still going at Brendan, yeah, airing out his entire McCorkle. life story on McCorkle. X, which you've probably all heard at this point. And Shorb's old Adam Sandler story he has told differently every time he tells it, of course comes back to haunt You're the uh, tough guy that does comedy, right? And I was like, holy... F I love how this guy here, I, I think he's some sort of like, he was like a baseball player or like he played baseball at a good level, whatever. He's a guy, right? And... He actually was a legit Brendan fan on Valuetainment. Like he was the one that was in place to be like the Brendan athlete kind of guy, bro guy. Like, and he looks like a bro. He looks like he could be like, for like you know, not to be rude, 
because I think he's a good dude, but he looks like he could be a Brendan Shaw stand-up comedy fan. And it's interesting to see Brendan turns him off during his pod, so much so after the fact, he comments on his own podcast. I think he had it with another fighter. Well, I forgot his name in the UFC. He had a fight. He had it with the fighter, the guy that came out with the old Mickey Gall. That's it. He had a podcast with Mickey Gall, this guy. And I think he said in his podcast with Mickey Gall that he completely just doesn't like Brendan anymore after this show, after this episode, because Brendan was trying to big time him, basically acting like a dick. So this guy was actually a fan of Brendan and Brendan managed to turn him into a hater because of how he acts and because of his attitude. Never change, Papa. Never change. You're that funny guy that kicks ass. I didn't know what to say. Uh, you're the ass kicker that t- tells jokes, right? He asked. He knows who you are. I was like, Hilariously, he had to tell this to Nick Swartzen, who was actually a close friend of Adam Sandler's. <laughs> he said the same for meeting Floyd Mayweather to Tom Segura, and just completely forgot that it's very similar to what Sandler apparently said. Oh, you're that white boy that works too much. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what Floyd... <laughs> <laughs> you're the white boy that works too much <sighs> Brendan is like acting as if like everybody around Hollywood was like marveling at his work ethnic everybody in Hollywood was marveling at his work ethnic honestly man Brendan is fucking incredible Floyd Mayweather would say it's so unbelievable that it's painful to listen to he also has another retired UFC fighter Luke Rockhold oh, yeah. after him showing Shorb how donuts are done and talking in Shorbanese in the description Shorb responds Oh yeah, true. I didn't notice that at first. I didn't notice that at first. Let me show you how you rip it be. Yo, Luke Rockhold's a little bit redacted himself. He's you know, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Even he is fucking using the Shaw Benise. Look at the look at the comments. Brendan Shaw can't even sell out a twenty seat pizza pub. If you wanted to hurt me, brother, you got me. What are we doing here, part two? Here. Always been a gearhead B. B wishes he was you in every facet. Homeless as fuck, B. I need a girl who's impressed by donuts in the dirt. Oh my god. Big Brendan needs a tutorial. Oh my god. That's really good. That's really fucking good. Big up the comments. Rim showing Shorb how donuts are done and talking in Shorbanese in the description. Shorb responded, Mmm, kinda. We need more power on that bad boy. Side note, those girls thought you were David Blaine. Oh, he deleted a comment. Brendan the pussy deleted a comment. The, I bet the replies are horrible. Brendan deleted a comment. Brendan deleted the fucking comment. What a fucking scary cat. What a pussy. He deleted a comment. The comment now deleted. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't handle it. <laughs> ah, you got him with that one. The internet's still not over his 40 reps claim. Oh my god, just a friendly reminder, the 40-year-old Zempic Papa can bench press 11 more reps than 23-year-old elite athlete. Yeah, that's just like... I know there's people in the gym, I'm sure some of you have seen them. Those of you that are in the stream chat, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys know in the gym, there's guys who... um. What do you call it? There's guys who train in the gym who are like really fat. I've, I've seen a couple of them, especially in my local gym, who just have freakishly amazing strength, like not ripped at all, bare belly, usually come into the gym in crocs and shit, and they can just like push crazy amounts of weight. Those guys do exist, but Papa's not one of them. I'm sorry. Those guys do exist who could just get on the bench press with no warm up and just bench 200, like a couple times for reps just for warm up. Those guys do exist, but Papa's not one of them. We've seen what he does when he tries to run 40 yard dash with Chappelle Lacey at a, you know, at some parking lot somewhere. He, he, he allegedly pulled two hammies. He probably got cramp into both legs, but come on. He's, he doesn't got the, he hasn't got the minerals. And by the way, those of you in the stream chat that are American, why do football players do this? Why do they have their midriff? Exp- is this like a show thing to show off your a six pack or is it like a utility thing? Why do they, why do they always expose their midriff like this? Is that just a fashion thing? Can you let me know in the stream chat? Is, just like, is that like for fashion? Is this to show like your form? Like, what is this? Is that is there a utility to this? Why do they always show off their midriff? They always kind of roll their shirts up like this. Is it because they they get too hot? Like what? What is the point of it? Or is this just like a style thing? They all do it. It's really strange. They wear crop tops and shit. It's no problem, but I'm just wondering what it's for. which the NFL all-time record is 49 reps. 
And he's back to saying that lie, but is now telling the truth, at least based on the actual number from the- Yeah, his actual number is 21. That's kept on college players. College, I did 21, 22. That's two good, summers ago, I did 225, 42 times. Oh, so he's now telling the truth about his college records, but he's still lying and say he did 20, 225. Okay, that's even the worst lie. What are people saying here? Tucking it under the pads because it's hot. Okay, cool. To stunt on the hose. It's for the ladies. It's hot as fucking Florida, man. Mean temperature. Okay, cool. Mineral sus for the hose. For the <laughs> for the hose. <laughs> Being sexy for ninety eight percent of the male watchers. Short shirt allows you to cool dims and for movement. Okay, cool. Big up aside and everybody else let me know. Appreciate. For the hose. <laughs> It reps? Yeah. For the fellas. For the mandem. Look at that face. That's a pure liar. Look at that face. That's a liar. That's someone's gonna scam you out of your fucking 41 k in it. Look at it. Oh, he's got a mint 400 hat. Of course he's got a mint 400 trucker hat. Of course he's got a mint 400 trucker hat. Of course he's got a mint 400 trucker hat. Of course. Of fucking course. <laughs> Show me the evidence. That's crazy. Crazy. If anybody knew that was BS, it was strong man and ex actor for the mountain. After Beyonce. Uh last summer I did forty, and his face changed. He goes, "You beat me." I go, "Aghast." It would have been so obviously not true to him. The six. Look at that form. Look at that form. Look at that fucking horrible form with one rip max. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that form. <laughs> oh, the bouncing is fucking incredible. Oh, one more time. Oh, yeah. I think I'll actually do bench tomorrow, to be honest, or, or this morning. It would have been so whatever. obviously not true to him, the 6 9. <laughs> <laughs> and then over 200 kilos were not preparing for a fight. I mean, look at the two of them next to each other. And of course, once called out. Imagine, allegedly, Brendan saying he does more bench presses than this guy. Oh, they're both, si they're both um, signed to rain. Interesting, isn't it? Definitely got different deals, I'd imagine. Definitely got different deals. Different bits of compensation you'd imagine for both those guys. The out sure is too tired to prove. I'll film it. I mean, you go. We'll do it now. I went, he got competitive. Yeah, I went, I'm not doing that now. I go, dude, I just got done deadlifting and pulling a truck. I'm not going to do it now. He goes, and then he goes, all right, tomorrow morning. But Brendan, of course, did more reps than one of the biggest guys on the planet. And it was last summer. And conveniently not on camera for anyone to witness exactly. as someone who exactly. was on camera constantly. Exactly. The mental exactly. gymnastics to make that. That form is terrible. It's not. It's not how much you lift, it's how you lift it. Exactly. Big up that, that user. Exactly. I've always said, especially in my workouts, I've always, I think that's one of the things that I'm happy about um, knowing that I'd kind of learned from the CrossFit world because I was into CrossFit when it kind of first started. I kind of went to a few boxes and shit and then kind of got put off by the monthly prices. Cause CrossFit box prices are fucking crazy, especially in London. I'm not too sure about you guys in the States, but in London, to be a part of a CrossFit box, you're paying like, I think I had like, I was able to do three classes a week and I think it was like 150 pounds. 150 pounds, which is one of the lowest ones around in the area. 150 for three classes a week, one hour per week to get some stupid guy to tell you to fucking jump up and down and shout you like you're in the Marines or something it was fucking stupid. So I fucking hated it. But one of the things I loved about it, what they used to tell you was that it's not about your length of a workout, how much you got in the workout or the how many exercises and shit or movements. It's all about the intensity at which you work out. So if you're warming up with intensity, you're fucking doing the fucking water with intensity, you're doing the strength and condition with intensity, you're doing the whatever, right? The, the you know, the movement stuff with intensity, that's what's going to actually make you um, way better and way fitter and do good form all that's malarkey that's the main thing it's not about the it's not about the ego shit do you know what I mean about stacking the weights and making the barbell bend just for your ego shit it's all about you know it's all about fucking um, you know having good form and obviously doing a maximum intensity but Brendan also comes from that he's got half and half Brendan's got that that Chad football thing and also the athlete stuff you know what I mean so he comes from that image of like you know wanting to put as many plates in the bar as possible making it rattle, that massive sound, smashing the weights, you know what I mean? Dropping the weights through, all that stuff. That work. It's definitely at a point of strange- Honestly, who wears, who wears fucking- Constantly, the mental gymnastics the to make that work. Is that the worst shoes to wear when you're doing deadlifts? They've got super massive so high, I mean, fix. this is definitely, you can tell you guys for like a trendy gym. Who wears fucking, limit, do, do you guys wear limit edition sneakers when you go to a gym? You guys wear Yeezys when you go to a gym?
super thick Yeezys. Surely you should be wearing, you should be barefooted or wearing as low of a shoe as possible. Or maybe even if you, if you want to go extreme, not extreme, but you know, weightlifting shoes. Why would you wear Yeezys in the gym? Super strange. It's definitely at a point of strange parasocial watching, but that's what the internet does with everything these days. Especially someone who can't stop blundering. Otherwise, there'd be nothing for people to clip up, and he'd fall into the same place as Carlos Mencia. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Is that his official channel? Carlos Mencia's official channel. 23.3 thousand subscribers. 1.8. Oh, my God, bro. Rogan actually killed his career, isn't it? 1.6 thousand views. Fucking hell. Rogan actually killed this guy's career. Wow or Dane Cook who can no longer pull the numbers they once did. Brendan may never learn. It's literally Groundhog Day but for being the greatest unintentionally funny comedian of all- I don't want him to learn. I want him to be the same forever because it's going to be entertaining for me. I can laugh at him until the end of time and this obviously helps me the content. I don't want him to learn ever. I don't want him to get better. I don't want him to figure it out. No come to Jesus moment. Just keep making- Because the good thing about people like this existing, it does give you an image of what you shouldn't do. And that's something I've learned from him. I've learned like, okay, cool. I'm definitely not going to copy you in this facet because this is redacted. All time. There's nothing else like it in comedy history and it's why many comedians approach the topic with the infatuation level of watching the end of the world. Believe it or not, but pre-2014, Brendan was actually liked, by myself included. He was funny and very self-aware. Exactly. Then he got smashed in the mush too many times, and here we are. I really enjoyed the fighter and the kid. And exactly, so exactly. I've said this before myself, like, people people want to retcon their history, but the fighter and the kid was actually good at one time. I'm sure some of you in the stream chat will recognize and know if you were around back then. The fighter and the kid was actually really good back in the day. Let's not lie. It was actually really good. It was actually really funny. And again, I wish we could pinpoint. I really wish we could pinpoint when it changed. Some people say it's when he started to dye his hair white. Some people say it's when he started to go on Bravo and E. Some people would say it's when he started to get his own like comedy gigs started to kind of go up. Um, I don't really remember the precise moment, but something happened and it changed completely. And the show dynamic changed. Brennan started to think he was walking on water. Brian Cannon stopped acting like a co-owner and a partner and more like an employee he's had to like play the like you know the second fiddle to fucking brendan and let him take the charge maybe actually maybe this is true maybe i've maybe i've fucking figured it out maybe the podcast changed you guys remember the law do you remember the law when they started first making their men their merch i think it might have been the abbott kenny fight club t-shirts or something or maybe the turbo slot t-shirts when they first started making merch I remember Brendan saying on a pod how he was annoyed about Brian, typical Brian story. He wasn't pulling his weight. He wasn't like adding ideas. He wasn't helping with the ideas. So Brendan just took charge of doing the merch for T5K. And then they decided to restructure the deal because before it was 50-50, then because Brendan was doing most of the graphics, doing most of the, you know, the, the quote unquote creative things around the fucking T5K, um, he wanted to take more of a cut. And I think Brian kind of offered, obviously being in a cut, and I think then it changed the splits from 50-50 to 60-40 and into 70-30 or something along those kind of lines. I think that's when maybe it kind of changed. That might be the reason, that might be the point when the percentage splits changed and that changed the dynamic between them both because it basically meant Brendan was Brian's boss in a way. They weren't really partners or co-owners anymore. Maybe that was the point. Until 2018. It's sad to see that many of his anti-fans were genuine fans to begin with, but it's almost impossible to imagine Shaw becoming self-aware. Oh, Koyla, very good point, Koyla, very good point. When he started to do stand-up and Uncle Joey went back to his opinion, yeah, that's a very good point. When Uncle Joey basically, that was, a one, that was the one time I was thinking Uncle Joey was lying when he basically tried to like walk back his original opinion about him and tried to be nice. I think probably Joe Rogan told him, hey, chill out, Brennan's my boy. But that that's a very good point there. Very, very good point. Ryan Joseph, 2017, when he went on the solo comedy and was signed to Showtime. Yep, good point. Very good point. That was the first time he did solo comedy. Yeah, yeah. That, that probably is there's somewhere around that mark. Showtime deal, below the belt. Do you remember when the Below the Belt was scripted? Do you guys remember that? When he tried to do the first episode, I wish we could find them. The videos don't exist anymore. But when he first did Below the Belt, 
he used to wear like a blazer. They kind of tried to do like a scripted show, like a almost like a version of ridiculousness or something. Do you guys remember that? But he couldn't read off the teleprompter. So he kept fucking up the words and shit, fucking up his, you know, the lines on his fucking show. And then they stopped doing that and then they just switched it to him just sitting on the couch or on the chair. Before it was him like moving, it was like on a set. It was like a thing. He was like moving around, showing graphics and shit. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely crazy and then he just couldn't read the lines on the teleprompter and just said you know what fuck this shit let's, let's stop yeah, doing this not dunking on himself for a change with obvious alleged lies owning the jokes people make of him and improving at the craft he picked but yo big up retroactive man appreciate retroactive fucking brilliant video really really good please make sure you check it out I'm actually into sub to this guy's channel after I'm not sub to it but check out retroactive he's fucking amazing Really, really cool videos. I fucking love everything this guy does. Absolutely brilliant. Big up retroactive. Amazing, amazing video. Amazing, amazing video. Big up everybody tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, you like what you see, you see what you like, please make sure you like the stream down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Please make sure you're liking the stream down below. Please make sure you're liking the stream down below.